Hey guys, Shane here with Fugadec 3D Printing. Today, I've got all the water cooling gear ready to go. We're going to go ahead and put it on the workbench PC and get this thing running. Welcome back, guys. All right, so... Where do we leave off? I did showed you the various videos up to now. So there was like the hardware, there was the building, there was the water cooling overview, and now I have some more water cooling parts we'll talk about and all of that. I went ahead and put together the new reservoir because I had the time to and it's not terribly that interesting to watch and I didn't want it to be about building something like this. If you do want to know, I can let you know how you want to put something like this together, the various parts that you need. But again, the part list will be all down below so you go ahead and pick up that stuff if you want to do something like this. The main thing was is I had this bracket here. So this is a bracket that would hold your reservoir and pump combo like this. That's not gonna work on this PC. So I went ahead and picked up a new D5 bracket. So this is a D5 pump. It's again, one of the two main types that are out there. Now this one, great. All right, so these brackets are these vertical brackets with the horizontal crossbar in order to go on here and then that will hold the pump upright. And I'm really hoping the spacing is correct. <laughs> but let's get that together and we'll find out. Okay, there it is just like that. And now it can sit nice and purdy. And now the real test is, they are not spaced wide enough. So I will have to drill into that bracket for the second side, because I'm not gonna be able to center it. Now, we're gonna have to look into that. But so far, that looks like that's gonna have to be a interesting setup there. So yeah, so I mean, this is real cool. I mean, this is a, uh, pump mod here on the bottom to give it a nice casing. This is the the vertical stand for this. Uh, they also have the horizontal stand, which I've had previously from another build. And then this is the Z reservoir, the Z cap, Z bottom adapter to the D5 pump mount. And then this is the B5 pump block. It has an in and out here, in in the top, which is where the water flows into, and an in here in the back. So, could you can run this pump without having this connected, but I just wanted it all in one. It looks a lot better that way. And I previously had this sleeved. I don't know if I'm gonna re-sleeve this or not. I do have orange somewhere to make it match, but uh, I might do that here at some point. Maybe not right now. And these come with these rubber gaskets, basically, that just go on the bottom of these, and they're just vibration dampeners, because the pump obviously makes noise and it moves, so you need to dampen those vibrations and just having those on there before you set it down, then it would be nice and quiet. Enough about the pump. Okay, what else came in? So we did that. Oh, I went ahead and printed out these. So um, these are the bending adapters for the tubing, which should work. I might need to rescale them up a little bit. So we'll see how this video goes today. These should work pretty well. And I've got a 90, 130 a 180 and then a very sh uh, very short 180 here. This is a rounded and more of a squared off one, or I could use this as 90 as well. But these are just to help me get those nice clean bends without having any bubbles or anything inside of them. And in order to bend clear tubing, you have to have some of this. This is silicon tubing. This fits, this is the exact, well, a little bit smaller than the inner diameter of the rigid tubing and need this, otherwise your tubing will just bend. Uh, like if you take a straw and just try to bend it around a curve, it's just going to kink. This prevents any kink. So use this with a little bit of uh, cooking oil, like olive oil or canola oil, whatever you have. Dip it on there, run it through that, get it nice and lubed up, and then you can slide it in and out. Because if you don't lube it and you bend it, it's probably going to get stuck. And then you're kind of screwed because trying to pull on this, it's just going to stretch and stretch and stretch. Be aware of that. So we have these ready to go. Uh, I have here are all of the uh, connectors, the fittings in order to connect all the blocks. So I've got a whole container full of those. Fans, radiator, tubing. Again, we have the uh, the valve. So this is the ball valve. So this looks like is gonna go on the front here of the pump reservoir combo. That way you can just turn this on and let the water flow right out and you can drain the system. You have to be able to drain your system and it has to be the lowest point. The, this pump is gonna be the lowest point in my loop. So that's gonna be helpful. The only thing that won't drain is the radiator because the radiator is gonna be like this with the, the um, fittings on the top. If it was this way, it would flow out without a problem. But this way, you just gotta remember that your radiator is gonna be full of liquid no matter what you do. 
do. You'd have to blow it out. Uh, finally, I got some Mayhems. If you have not used water cooling dye or anything like that, buy Mayhems. It is amazing stuff. I've used it for years, but I didn't have any orange. So here's some orange just dye for some distilled water. And then I also have this, which is his pastel. So this will show a difference. I don't know if I'm going to use this one. I've used pastel before. It's amazing. I think this is enough for this loop. I really don't remember because this is 250 milliliters you add 750 milliliters to this which gives you one liter of coolant i don't know if a liter is going to be enough for this but i can only ship so many ounces and milliliters per box so i just bought one for now we'll take a look at it i might just run this again i really don't know because this is much easier just to add in what you want Ooh. We'll see how it looks with this first, and if I don't like it, then I'll buy another bottle of this, and we'll do that. Uh, again, Mayhem's awesome stuff. None of this is paid, none, so Bits Power, Thermal Take, anybody, no one's paying for this video. I either had this hardware, or I bought it all 100% on my own, so I just wanna be sure, really clear about that, but I've used this stuff for years, and it's amazing. Uh, okay, so first things first, let's get the back of this opened up. Let's get the fans mounted to the radiator. Let's get the radiator mounted to the chassis, and then we'll get the fittings put on everything. We'll figure out how we're gonna mount the pump, and the reservoir to this bracket down there. And then we will start the tedious task of bending. And that's gonna be, well, we're gonna start time-lapsing here very shortly, but that's gonna be the very tedious task is trying to get that to work. So I would do the best I can with these. If these don't work out, I will upscale them a little bit and then try again. It doesn't fit properly. So, let me go dive into my stuff and see if I have another reservoir. I really like this. This is the E-Series, I think, of the uh, XSPC rads. Let's see if I have some that don't have all these connectors on them. Crap, or ports, I should say. All right, sweet stuff. I do have one. That's good. Let's see how this matches up now. All right, now that sits flush on there, so that's fantastic. Nice thing about this radiator over other ones is that they are 632 uh, threaded. They don't have this weird M or anything like that. So if you're in America, XSPC radiators are the way to go for you. Okay, now when you're putting a little the kind of pro tip here, when you're putting fans on a radiator, you have to be really aware of how long your screws are. Because if your screws puncture these fins, you're gonna get a leak, and that's never any good. So I'm gonna try these ones first, and those are too long. So what you do is you put it in to your fan, you hold your fan over, and you see if it can touch. And these are just a bit too long. I do have these silver ones, which are probably what I have to end up using, yeah. And those don't look horrible, but I'll make those do. So we have a dilemma on our hands because the stopper that I have does not fit beside this fitting. So let's break out the gear. So I have a whole bunch of these extension fittings and yet they will just make it. So I don't need it to be anything crazy long. 
a nice shiny one. You can use this one. That is like super tight to each other, super duper tight right there. Now we can fit this on to it here, and that will work out well for us. Before we go any further, I really need to figure out how to mount this thing here, because that's gonna be pretty crucial to what we're doing. The other thing I need to worry about is having this far enough back, now that I had to bring this out, making that 90 degree bend out of here to come up and out, I gotta put this thing back a fair bit in order to make that happen. All right, well now the easy part is done. All the hardware is in there now. It's mounted, there are fittings on everything. So that's good to go. Now we gotta break out the tubing and see how in the world we're gonna interconnect all of this. I have a very good, a fairly good idea, I should say, not very good, fairly good idea of how I want to accomplish this, but the thought and the action, you know, the reality of it are two very different things. Pretty much old tubing is pretty high quality stuff. I like it. So what I'll do is I'll show you what I'm thinking. The output of the reservoir is gonna go into the CPU block. CPU block to the RAM, up the RAM, into the radiator, radiator down into the reservoir. The reason why I'm routing it all that way is if I had GPUs, they would be cooled first because they usually get the hottest, especially when under load. But in this case, I'm not water cooling those, I don't have blocks for these. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do the inlet of the CPU first. That way the coolest water is getting to the hottest component first and then it will go to the RAM. Now the RAM does get pretty hot, but it'll be okay. It'll work out just fine. So we just need to start, I'm gonna start with the short runs first and make sure some practice, make sure I can actually get those all to work. And then once I know that I can have those all working, then I will go ahead and proceed down to this long run, which probably is gonna have to come up and over because I have just enough space to get a bend and come up out of there. So if I come up out of there at an angle, I might be able to bring it just in front of this component or I'll bring it up around like that. I'm unsure what I'm gonna do yet, but you know, we'll get to it when I get there. All right, well here it is. So everything's piped up now. This took me literally all day because I screwed up. So thankfully there are six sticks that come inside this pack. I used four of them. Uh, one was actually a complete waste. This here for this long run here, it almost takes an entire stick just for that run. The problem was is that I bent this too far this way. So I was already past the port and you can't just cut this part down. So it's easy if you make it too, like if it's too high, you can just cut it and make it a little bit lower. Obviously if it's too low, you can't, but that was, you know, you live and you learn. I'm not the best at this, but it all came out well. These are all in line here, which is what I wanted. This one's a little further back. I did the easiest bend that I could figure out on how to do that. 
and this long one is a nice straight and then it goes straight in. Uh, the bends came out pretty well. Again, I'm not great at it. These tools helped out quite a bit. They're a little too small. If your tube is a little too hot, you're actually gonna get some of the imperfections here in the print in it. So that's where, like again, if you're gonna buy the $50 kit, so be it. But I do need to ask the guy if he can make these a little bit bigger to fit these. Again, this is a little bit larger OD, outer diameter, than what this is made for. Uh, I also went ahead and added in, you can't see it here, but the USB 3.0 card has been added in. I went ahead and wired it. That's all going in the back now. I replaced the SATA cables because the one I had in there was pinching against the radiator. It was like forcing, I didn't want it to actually force and break off the SATA port off the motherboard itself. So we went ahead and replaced that with a much shorter, just red cable. Again, it's not the prettiest thing, but it does the job quite well. I also went ahead and added down under here is the fan controller for these fans. It's the best place I could find for it as well that I could get the three fan cables routed back out, but so be it. All right, if we take a look here in the back, I still have to manage these cables, put tuck these up under there somewhere. The rest of these just tuck under there, which is not a problem at all. And I have to take the solid state drive that's currently in my laptop right here I need to finish emptying it off onto my server, well the backup server because that's the only what's online right now. Finish emptying all that off so that it's clean and then I'm going to throw it in here. That's going to be my boot drive because that laptop is pretty much going to go in the trash. It's just had its days and it's done. And I can add a mount here. I need to just move some more of these cables just a little bit out of the way because I want to keep the radiators as, uh, you know, as uh, free as possible. I don't want anything in the way of them to restrict my airflow. And this big plate here, once you put on the back, this is where the actual TV wall mount will mount to, and I have that um, right over there out of the way. So once I finally can finish all this up, I'll go ahead and do that. So now, the very last thing to do is leak test this, and I'm not gonna do that in the video because it's super boring, and I think this video is already gonna be long enough as it is. So with this, I'm gonna go ahead, you get some paper towels, you put them down underneath all of your connections, and you fill it up with just some distilled water, and you let it run. Just only the pump's gonna run. I'll have the PSU uh, hot wired, I'll use another uh, PSU just to run the pump. I'll have it run, at least, I'll put it on my desk, have it run for a few hours while I'm down here working on some other videos and whatnot. But just that pump be running, I'll make sure all the connections are good. Once you run it for a couple hours, you need to go through and tighten everything down again. And then once you get this fully built, after you build a system, you wanna heat it up, so run Prime 95 or something, get that water nice and warm. That way, you, these connections will loosen up again and you'll tighten them down one more time. Usually two to three tightenings is what you need to do to these type of connections and that way you don't need to worry about them ever popping off because it does get a lot of pressure in there and if it gets over pressurized one of these will pop out you got to make sure you take care of that heat up the water you'll be good to go okay so we're going to call it there for this video i thank you guys for bearing with me on this one uh, hopefully the time lapse is a little bit better than it was last time i had to come in and out i had to run around and do other things i'm in and out of the video because i was cutting over my other workbench i don't cut things over here because it's on the rug and a wife would kill me but thank you for watching if you liked the video give it a like if you didn't dislike it, let me know down below. If you want to help me out, you can subscribe, donate me via Patreon, use the affiliate links down below. I appreciate anything and everything that you guys do. I really do. So until next time, happy printing.